Ray Charles was a poor, blind, newly orphaned teenager living in Tampa, Florida in 1948 when he decided to move to Seattle, picking the city because it was as far away as he could get from where he was. He stayed only two years, but during that time he cut his first record and began to develop the genre-bending musical style that would make him an international star. Charles often spoke of Seattle as a pivotal point in his long and hugely successful career as a singer-songwriter. I met a lot of very good friends here, he told one interviewer. I liked the atmosphere. The people were friendly. The people took to me right away. Seattle is the town where I made my first record, and if you ever want to say where I got my start, you have to say that. Ray Charles Robinson was born September 23, 1930 in Albany, Georgia, the first child of Aretha and Bailey Robinson. His father worked off and on for the railroads, his mother took in laundry. The family started out poor and stayed that way throughout the hard years of the Depression. Even compared to other black people, Charles recalled, we were on the bottom of the ladder looking up at everyone else. Nothing below us except the ground. The family moved across the border to Greenville, Florida when Charles was a few months old. A second child soon followed, a son named George. Bailey Johnson became little more than an occasional visitor after that. The old man wasn't part of my life, Charles wrote in his 1978 autobiography. To tell the truth, I wouldn't bet a lot of money that he and my mother were ever married. He was a tall dude, I remember that, but he was hardly ever around. Despite the poverty, Charles recalled his early childhood as a happy time. He felt loved by two women, his mother, whom he called Mama, and his father's first wife, a woman he called Mother. He loved the singing he heard on Sundays at the Shiloh Baptist Church. Above all, he loved picking out boogie-woogie tunes on the upright piano owned by a neighbour called Wiley Pittman. I was born with music inside me, he said, and from the moment I learned there were piano keys to be mashed, I started mashing them, trying to make sounds out of feelings. When he was about five, Charles witnessed the drowning death of his younger brother. The two boys had been in the backyard playing near a large metal tub their mother used for washing clothes when four-year-old George slipped over the edge and into the soapy water. Charles tried to pull him out, but his brother, quickly weighted down by his wet clothing, was too heavy. Charles ran indoors screaming for his mother, but it was too late. It was the first major tragedy in a life that would have many other sorrows. Not long after the drowning, Charles began to lose vision, apparently as a result of untreated glaucoma. He was completely blind by the time he was seven. He credited his mother with preparing him to live without sight. She made him continue to draw water from the well, bring in the firewood, and do other chores, even though he often tripped and fell. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to remember this if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all of our latest content. You may be blind, she told him, but you're not stupid. You have to do things for yourself. No one else will do them for you. She let me roam. Let me make my own mistakes. Let me discover the world for myself. From this, he developed a fierce independence and the ability to maneuver so adroitly that some people, later in his life, doubted that he was really blind. Charles's mother died when he was 15, and for a year he toured on the Chitlin circuit in the south. While on the road, he also picked up a love for heroin. At the age of 16, Charles moved to Seattle. There he met a young Quincy Jones, a friend and collaborator he would keep for the rest of his life. Charles performed with the McSun Trio in the 1940s. His early playing style closely resembled the work of his two major influences, Charles Brown and Nat King Cole. Charles later would develop his own distinctive sound. In 1949, he released his first single, Confession Blues, with the McSun Trio. The song did well on the R&B charts. More success on the R&B charts followed with Baby Let Me Hold Your Hand and Kissin' Me Baby. By 1953, Charles had landed a deal with Atlantic Records. 
he celebrated his first R&B hit single with the label Mess Around. A year later, Charles's now classic song I Got A Woman reached number one on the R&B charts. The song reflected an advance in his musical style. He was no longer a Cole imitator. His fusion of gospel and R&B helped to create a new musical genre known as soul. By the late 1950s, Charles began entertaining the world of jazz, cutting records with members of the modern jazz quartet. Fellow musicians began to call Charles the genius, an appropriate title for the rambling musician who never worked in just one style, but blended and beautified all that he touched. He also earned the nickname, the father of soul. Charles's biggest success was perhaps his ability to cross over into pop music too, reaching number six on the pop chart and number one on the R&B chart with his hit, What Did I Say? The year 1960 brought Charles his first Grammy Award for Georgia On My Mind, followed by another Grammy for the single Hit The Road Jack. For his day, he maintained a rare level of creative control over his music. Charles broke down the boundaries of music genres in 1962 with modern sounds in country and western music. On this album, he gave his own soulful interpretations of many country classics. While thriving creatively, Charles struggled in his personal life. He continued to battle with heroin addiction. In 1965, Charles was arrested for possession. Charles avoided jail after his arrest for possession by finally kicking the habit at a clinic in Los Angeles. His releases in the 1960s and 70s were hit or miss, but he remained one of music's most respected stars. Charles won a Grammy Award for his rendition of Stevie Wonder's Living for the City, and three years later, he released his autobiography, Brother Ray. In 1980, Charles appeared in the comedy The Blues Brothers with John Belushi and Dan Aykroyd. The music icon received a special honor a few years later as one of the first people inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Charles was recognized for his contributions to the genre alongside such fellow luminaries as James Brown, Elvis Presley, Sam Cooke and Buddy Holly. Charles returned to the spotlight in the early 1990s with several high profile appearances. He also recorded commercials for Pepsi Cola singing You Got the Right One Baby as his catchphrase and performed We Are The World for the organization USA for Africa alongside the likes of Billy Joel, Diana Ross, Cindy Lauper, Bruce Springsteen and Smokey Robinson. In 2003, Charles had to cancel his tour for the first time in 53 years. He underwent hip replacement surgery. While that operation was successful, Charles soon learned he was suffering from liver disease. He died on June the 10th, 2004 at his home in Beverly Hills, California. During his lifetime, Charles recorded more than 60 albums and performed more than 10,000 concerts. Longtime friend Quincy Jones was just one of many who mourned the passing of Charles. There will never be another musician who did as much to break down the perceived walls of musical genres, Jones stated, according to the New York Times. Ray used to say that if he had a dime, he would give me a nickel. Well, I would give that nickel back to have him still be here with us, but I know that heaven has become a much better place with him in it. More than 1,500 people came to say goodbye to the musical legend at his funeral, including B.B. King, Willie Nelson, and Stevie Wonder, who were among those who performed at the service. Charles's final album, Genius Loves Company, released two months after his death, consists of duets with various admirers and contemporaries. His life story became a hit film entitled Ray later that year. Jamie Foxx starred as the legendary performer, and he won an Academy Award for his portrayal of Charles. Now it's time to hear from you. Do you have a favorite Ray Charles song or perhaps an album of his that you like the most or 
or even a moment in his career that you enjoy the most, let us know in the comments below. And if you haven't already done so, click the bell icon to stay updated on all of our latest content.